Welcome to the 18th season of the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our Nitwits panel includes Neil Riddell of the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com, Jacob Kauker of WTAJ Sports, and a special guest Nitwit each week. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Reed and Cellini. Doctors Reed and Cellini provide orthodontics for children and adults. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. Buy what you want, rent what you need. By Monarch Cleaners for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Penn State nipped late by the Wildcats at Ryan Field. Here to break things down from that 23-21 loss are the Nitwits. They are Neil Rudell of the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan from FightOnState.com, former Penn State captain Mike Irwin, and I'm, I am, of course, your host, Jacob Kalker. It's a story of missed opportunities for the Nittany Lions, starting with sleepwalking throughout most of the first half. Yeah, to, uh, they weren't ready to play on either side of the ball, and they, uh, they didn't end the game either. We'll get to the timeout, lack of timeout uh, uh, management, uh, just very impressive, uh, as particularly because I think they had built for this game, uh, you know, with an open date and a chance to roll into Michigan, uh, eight and two, feeling good about yourself. I think, they, I think it was a low moment really uh, under James Franklin, particularly that last couple minutes when they took their he took their last breath away by not calling time. Yeah, out. Northwestern's a decent team, but I don't get the sense that they're a top 25 team. I mean, you can't tell me that there aren't 25 teams in the nation better than that team. And, you know, on the way back, I mean, in the airport, everybody was talking about missed opportunities. Mike's friends, the Rosenbergs and Krentzmans, were saying, I can't wait to hear what Mike has to say about this game. But even James Franklin with the timeout at the end. Yeah, and he, at least he owned it yeah. that he didn't he didn't capitalize when he needed to. But that's what this game was about: just sicky dropping passes, the the kickoffs. I mean, you can't even execute a kickoff. You know, I, I just at this point of the season. Listen, I get you've played ten games in ten weeks, but these are like basic things that shouldn't be popping up at this point. Well, you know, even the announcers when we get into the third quarter on TV said this is very painful to watch. That's before Penn State finally woke up and started. to get the momentum back and started to play football. But uh, I don't know what the numbers were, but I think they didn't have a first down in the first four or five series that they had the ball. And then I think nine out of the first 10. And then they finally got one on a roughing the passer or the guy hit the passer late. And they forgot their first first down. So it was ugly and I'm not sure. You have to give uh, Northwestern credit though. I mean, they have a decent team. I mean, they're pretty well coached. I think and they have some good athletes on that team. and. They were ranked 21 in the country, whether, you know, you want to believe that or not. They're you know, number 21 right now. And at least Penn State, we've lost to three teams that are in the top 25. So, you know, Temple and Penn Ohio State. State and <laughs> How does that bode for the remainder of the and season? We, and we have two more to play, <laughs> yeah. so we got a chance to come back. Penn you know? State's put a couple of those teams <laughs> in the top 25. <laughs> and, so, and so often, I mean, it, it kind of looked like – almost all the Penn State Northwestern games I've seen over the last decade where slow start by Penn State in the first half, yeah. rally in the second half. You almost expect them to win in those situations. And so far this year, we've seen them, especially on defense, kind of just make that one extra winning play. Malik Golden's touchdown again, or not touchdown, interception against Maryland kind of sealed things there. Not the case, though, in that final two minutes so or so stretch. Yeah. yeah. Go I ahead. mean, the thing that after the game, Jason Cabinda, you know, we were able to talk to him. And this kid is just, I mean, he's terrific after yeah. games. And he basically said what happened was Northwestern was getting up to the line and doing check with me's. And that's basically admitting that Penn State wasn't adjusting the way it should be. So the one thing where I give them some a little bit of a pass is that you have to recall that they lost Mike Hull from last year. And I know you're pretty deep into the season, but at, when he was a, red, or a sophomore, 
a redshirt freshman. Mike Hall was behind the Motties and Hodges and, and all those guys. So they have some young linebackers, and I think that's what really is hurting them against these running teams. I know the D-line is not playing great, but they, these are the guys, you know, the middle linebacker has to make these adjustments, and I just don't think he's there. Now, the good thing is hopefully he learns from these things. On the road, you can't allow a kickoff return no. for a touchdown. I mean, really, at the end of the day, even though I think their defense did not play well, they only allowed 17 points. So you really should be able to win a game like that in this in this era when you supposedly have a, a decent offense. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, I know that there were, you know, the kickoff return. You just can't. You know, Haley's got to hold that interception, mm -hmm. and the game's over. Yeah. Um, there were a half a dozen plays that they didn't make, and uh, I do give Northwestern credit, but Northwestern really opened the door for Penn State also. Yeah. But you know, Northwestern does have a, a good team, and I, I go back with Mark said watching Cabinda out there. I know he's a leading tackler on the team, but he couldn't get out to, away from the blockers. So the Northwestern was doing a good job blocking the play, and they had two weeks to prepare. And I think they were 0-7 against Big Ten teams after a week's layoff. So this is the first time they come back against a Big Ten team and won. But uh, I think they made a lot of adjustments and played well. I mean, uh, and we were in the game, I mean, there's probably about two or three plays we we win, win that game. You're, you're right, Neil. That late, late in the game there, where it was uh, third and 15 on the last series, and yeah, they play. threw that one out. Haley that was man caught it out there in, in the open. And uh, yeah, the model for Northwestern is usually to start seasons really well. I mean, they have some great wins. I mean, they win against Stanford. Mm -hmm. I think at Stanford, right? No, it was, it no, was, it was in at, at, at Northwestern, but they they, they played won, Duke. at Duke. Yeah. And then they turn around and get blown out by Iowa, blown out by Michigan. But usually they start games and seasons well and maybe don't finish them. That's what happened yesterday, but they finished this game off. But did they finish it or did Penn State kind of give it away? And that's where, listen, I agree with Mike completely that you do have to give Northwestern a lot of credit. But in the final minute, couple minutes of that game, Penn State made so many mistakes where they could have won that game. I start with the Hackenberg interception. Now, that mm -hmm. didn't lead directly to a touchdown, but it very well could have. I mean, that, they're lucky that kid fell down. Yeah, uh, Haley a field goal the there. Uh, That's you know, my Northwestern point. needs a touchdown. To yeah, beat so it was, it, you know, it was offense, it was defense, it was the coaches, and that's where Jake – they have to get better at making those plays late in the game. Now, to their credit, in all the close games so far this year, they were pushing the right, right buttons, and the defense was making the right plays, and this is the one but where somebody else gets the better. Why are you throwing the ball I, across I the field from the opposite hash? No you sense. did it twice. Um, is that the play call? Is that is that what he checks into? Uh, I can't believe he checked into <laughs> to that. No, you're right. I mean, they should be doing north-south throwing, and that's where they're most effective. I think if you look at it, they, as far as – most uh, biggest plays in college football, they have 29 out of 30, 29 30-yard 30 plays or better. You They've know, got a lot sequence. of explosive so plays, yeah. Right. They have a lot of explosive plays, and they're throwing that sideline pattern. That ball had to throw 35 yards across field. I mean, they, Hackenberg's lucky he didn't get three other yeah, interceptions right. that game. But he was lucky to come out of there. All right, well, still ahead on the Nitwitch, we'll touch on a big record overshadowed by this Penn State loss, plus a bit of the good as well as the bad of the Nittany Lions' Wildcat against the Wildcats. More Nitwits will be on the way after this short break. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Doctors Reed and Selaney, orthodontics for children and adults. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. Buy what you want, rent what you need. I'm Ryan Kaiser from your Penn State Nitty Lions. You're watching the Nitwit. Well, we heard all week about Penn State's struggle to stop a dual threat quarterback, how they were preparing for the read option. Instead, Northwestern running back Justin Jackson going more traditional, going off for 186 yards. The Wildcats totaling almost two and a quarter on the ground. How concerning is this inability to stop the run? Well, it's, it's very concerning. I mean, as, as I mentioned earlier, when they're, I think people have kind of figured out that when you get to the line and you can do a check with me against this defense, 
they're having trouble adjusting. And again, I don't know that there's any answer to that other than these kids getting experience, especially those linebackers. And I mentioned uh, Kabinda before, Reader, true for, or a redshirt freshman, they weren't really expecting to play. I mean, that's it's part of the growing pains that you have to go through at this point. And I think this was the first team, the difference, this was the first team where it wasn't the quarterback mm -hmm. directly do what they were able to do with the yeah. running back. They aren't setting the edge real well. As good as NASA, great as NASA has been at rushing the passer, I think that their ends have been sucked in at times. Sickles as well. Um, and Northwestern was able to move around both edges. I know some of that is linebacker and, and secondary support. Um, but, you know, this has not been a good year for them stopping uh, the run. Actually, they've been weak on a perimeter for a long time. But, you know, when you watch the, the back on uh, – on Saturday, I mean, a lot of those balls were, he was going off tackle and, and the linebackers weren't able to shake their blockers to get out to make the tackle. So I don't know that the, I mean, the front four, I mean, the linebackers got to get involved in the play in there to, to stop the, uh, to stop the run. But that is true. I mean, but this kid has rushed for, I think, 1,200 yards last year and then yeah. this year, like 800 and some yards yeah, already. The downfield so. blocking, I thought, was tremendous and, and really at the point of attack as but well. But you know that's coming as Penn State. And mm -hmm. that's, again, that's the thing where they just have to learn. You know, you could talk about the defensive line, and I agree with you that guys maybe didn't make, you know, set edges and that sort of thing. But even if that doesn't happen, your linebackers, as Mike said, should be able to get around some of these slower players and, yeah. and make the tackles. And, but they're just not there. I mean, I think long term they're going to be great at linebacker. They're just not there yet. Not one of the longest runs in the game, but late in the game with about a minute to play, Northwestern picks up a first down on the ground. And James Franklin didn't call a timeout, admitted his mistake after the game. Let's go more in depth in that, Neil. Yeah, I mean, that's just something. It's just inexcusable. And I, I was glad to see him, as you said, own the mistake. And he got to it right away. You could tell yesterday from all the losses that they've had now, through the last couple of years that this one hit him the hardest. You know, they've had some one point losses last year, but you know, you're 20 games in, uh, you know, to a pretty good sample size. And that just was not good game management. And, and he needs to improve with that. Well, when the fans are groaning, I mean, we were down there on, on the field and the fans behind us kind of knew what was going on. The irony, and I mentioned this to Neil in the press box, this is the same coaching staff who blew two timeouts back to back in a punt situation the previous week. So they go from using too many timeouts to not, it, these are the kind of basic things. We saw it against Minnesota a week earlier, but I think that's a little bit more forgivable because you had a coach who was put in a real difficult situation. James Franklin and his staff have to be much better at yeah. all this game management Yeah, stuff. I mean, this, they, he's been a head coach five years and, and his whole staff has been around him. And I don't, he, he said it's his responsibility. Absolutely. And clearly it is. But if you're the, and not to pile on John Donovan at all, but the offense needs the ball back. So is it, is, should it be John Donovan that's saying, hey, you want a timeout here? We need some time in case they score. It doesn't matter well, who it is, but it, somebody has to be there to, right. to say that. But if you look at it, it was like third and 15, and it was about a minute, 48 seconds to go. And they didn't, and they made the first down. I right. mean, they made the first down, so they're in field goal range now with a minute 48 to go. And then for some reason or another, they didn't call the timeout. They let it run the next couple of plays. It got down to 22 seconds well, Mike, before I think they ever the called the timeout. I think the critical was after the first down mm -hmm. run because if they would have called it before the first down run, they still would have been able to bleed the clock right. down. We went over this whole thing right. <laughs> pretty significantly. Yeah, they, they, they missed out on 20. Well, yeah, I think they were in field goal raves then, though, weren't well, they? Well, it was, it was a yeah, longer field goal. We kind of hashed this one out. Yeah, yeah, longer field goal, yeah. I mean, but, but I mean, still. it's a shame you got to come back to that and rely on a, a, a drive for a minute 48. And having said that, that, who's to we say? We could have put that game away. Who's right. to say with 38? They, 38 would, they would have had 38 seconds that they, with their exactly. kicking situation. But the point is, when your coaching staff is making that sort of mistake, and again, we're piling on, he owned it. I give him so much credit for doing that because that sends a great message to Mike the Mike Tomlin do, has yeah. never done that, and, he, and he's been equally <laughs> bad, although today he was a little better. <laughs> <laughs> so he learned. Well, right. let me ask you about the play, the third and two play, where it was host. two minutes and 58 seconds to go. We go into the uh, Wildcat offense, and 
and I give it to Barkley, and Barkley doesn't make it. I, mean, I think uh, we're going to hit Jake, on that. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the next segment. Oh, okay. It's the next. It's a little tea of uh, an early I'm sorry, tease I'm getting ahead of you guys. I didn't get a coffee. He didn't get a I sent you the I agenda. I have my own agenda. Before, before, before we get to that, I'm, just, I'm right, tired of this old agenda you guys have. I'm going to have my own from now on. Before we get to that, just right before the break, because, again, we're going to get back to that call. How about Carl Nassib setting this record? You know, 15 and a half sacks for a guy who has never started at any level level besides peewee maybe junior high until now to for him to have done this and i know you were maybe not so good against the run you right. said but but his pass rushing and just what he's been able to do in this one year where's that kind of put him well it's been a terrific year you're talking about uh some really heady stuff there courtney brown mm -hmm. uh larry Cuban's record has been around 35 years um you know, Larry Cuban played with Bruce Clark and Matt Millen. I mean, those were great defensive teams. For this kid, has been a great story, and uh, I think it's a, a neat record that he's broken. Yeah, and I mean, just it's, you talk about stick to itiveness, and this is one of the guys mm -hmm. who came in as a walk on. And listen, he probably at some point could have gone somewhere else, but he stuck with this program through thick and thin, waited his turn, and you know what? He's going to be kind of richly rewarded when this is all over. All right. Well, Mike may have given away what we're going to talk about next, but I've still, <laughs> I've still got to tease it here. We'll get to Penn State's running game, including everyone's favorite conversation starter, the Wildcat. How it works, where it failed, on the Nitwits when we come back. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. Now back to the Nitwits. <laughs> A roundtable discussion of Penn State football. Well, true freshman running back Saquon Barkley rushes for 120 yards in Penn State's two-point loss. If it would have been 121, maybe we're talking about a Penn State win today. That last run coming out of the wildcat formation where he takes the direct snap, it had been working, didn't work there, though. You know, the play had been good to them. Uh, you know, he, you put the, the ball in the hands of, of your best player at that point. I don't really want to be overly critical. I mean, the offensive line played better in the second half. Uh, you know, the only negative is the whole, everybody in the building knew it was coming. So there was no element of surprise. And I don't know that they were spread out as maybe they could or should have been for the play. I, I can't argue the play call. Right. I mean, it, it's been so successful. I mean, the thing with this offensive line, when you do one yard, you have to be able to, and, and to me, that's on the line. Now, they may go back and look at the tape and think he cut wrong or something. I have no idea. But I'm just telling you that when you need, a, when you need one yard, your offensive line has to be able to get that job done. And it just didn't happen right there. Yeah, I know. Somebody said that they're playing against Northwestern. They're smart guys. They're going to figure out what they're going to run. But, that, that, but the shotgun, I, I would have called the same play. I mean, it's worked for the two touchdown right. runs. And it gives Barkley a chance to see the whole field and, and he's making his own choice where he's going to run. I mean, unfortunately, the, some, some of the defensive linemen penetrated in and he couldn't get out of the backfield. But uh, those things are going to happen. But I think it was the right call. Well, you say Northwestern's a smart team, but with a 20-7 lead, they rough the punter and then, then rough the quarterback <laughs> right. and really let Penn State get back in the game. Well, uh, one of your favorite writers to, some, to the mirror mentioned my wife this morning that Northwestern was going to figure that play out because there are a lot of bright guys that go to Northwestern. Even Jake got into Northwestern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the nice. burn, the burn. The one guy, the one guy last week who picked the Penn State blowout, uh, and, and that's, yeah. They that, kicked that him out of Evans. Well, well, how would a Northwestern grad pick a Penn State blowout? Because right? yeah. I've seen too many of these games in my time. Let's just put it that way. You know, some other, uh, some of the positives that were, uh, you know, I thought Geno Lewis, uh, that pass, and he's gotten more involved these last couple of weeks, and that's kind of good to see mm -hmm. because he had been, uh, you know, kind of by a bypassed on the depth chart. Uh, so I think that was uh, one of the pluses. Yeah, I mean, I think overall the fact that they came back in the game was a right. plus too. Yeah. Even though Northwestern opened the door, I mean, they had to step through it. So you can't just focus on all the negative at the beginning and at the very, very end. In the middle there, they did some really nice th things. And again, it's just a matter of with some of the younger players, you hope they're able to learn from that. All right, well, we are still not done here on the Nitwit. Someone is closing in on the Nitwit of the Year leader. 
who it is might <laughs> shock you. Plus, a sneak peek inside the Nittany Lions bye week. Stay with us. More Nitwits is on the way. The Nitwits are brought to you by EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. Now back to the Nitwits. A roundtable discussion of Penn State football. Now this is where we'd usually make a pick, but none of that this week. Penn State's off, so we're going to skip that. But still on the schedule, Michigan coming off a lopsided win against Rutgers. Michigan State losing in controversial fashion against Nebraska. Yeah, I mean, that's you look at these last two games, and listen, if you're a Penn State football player, what more would you want? You get two ranked teams, one at home in a whiteout, another one on the road against Michigan State. I have to say I was surprised by that Nebraska game. We were watching it a little bit Saturday night. Uh, Nebraska beating Michigan State, but hey, it's two marquee opponents. Not sure anybody would have thought Michigan was going to be this good, this fast, but they are. So you get an opportunity to really prove yourself. So as I looked at that Northwestern game, as tough as that was, they still have every opportunity to prove themselves with a couple of these late games. Yeah, I think there's there are two winnable games, um, but going to be large orders. And then there are obviously two games that, that if they don't fix some things, uh, it could be a little bit ugly. Um, you know, it's going to be curious. It'll be Connor Cook's last game up there, and, and Harbaugh coming in. I think it's going to be an exciting time. I think they could have created great buzz at 8-2. and two. But it'll be senior day, and these six seniors, and we'll get to that uh, a little and bit more else. in the, in the uh, <laughs> oh, next week. But, you know, there's six seniors that have been around, Through you know, lot. since the Paterno era, and they, they really deserve a, a good send-off. Well, you know, that, I mean, if we had to beat Northwestern, I mean, we'd be – eight and two and looking at a good bowl game. Now to come back, we're gonna to have to beat one of those Michigan teams, either Michigan or Michigan State, to go to a, at least a nice climate for, uh, for the uh, <laughs> well, for The bowl scouts season. are gonna love Mike. <laughs> Plus with Michigan State losing, there was all that talk of maybe three Big Ten teams yeah. in the New Year's Day. That's still, I guess, a possibility because that would obviously slide everyone, including Penn State, up maybe a nicer spot, so we'll see how that still shakes yeah, Michigan up. Michigan State still has some work to do, though. Yeah. They have some well, they, they got Iowa still undefeated at the Big right, Ten. Right. So. Iowa's playing really hard. I know Indiana's not great, but the, from what I saw in that game yesterday, I was pretty impressed. Yeah. They have All more right. offense than they've had. All right, well, let's take a quick look at our nitwit of the year standings. Uh, Nobody took Northwestern. Thought you so would, Jake. We can add another deflated ball, so the deflate, no winner moves into second place. Neil still with a commanding lead. The rest of us still at one ball apiece. Of course, our Michigan picks for <laughs> the Why well, don't you guys Penn catch State. the deflated ball already? I know. We're, we're just struggling here. Of course, our Michigan Penn State <laughs> picks will winner. come next week. We've also got a special guest next week. Yes, absolutely. Penn State Athletic Director Sandy Barber will be here. Not much to talk about. Oh, yeah. Her second fun. appearance. Yeah. She's an honorary nitwit. She likes it. A lot of facility stuff to talk about, so it's going to be fun hashing that out. Future Beaver Stadium, future Penn State athletics in general, so you want to be with us next week. For this week, I hope you have a great one. We will see you a week from now on the Nitwits. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker. No one will work harder to sell your home by Reed and Selaney. Doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. Buy what you want, rent what you need. By Monarch Cleaners for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. You can also see the nitwits on altunamirror.com. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next week.